Good day everyone, Trainer Maxim with you. Thank you very much for joining me for this episode. Today we're going to talk about the stamina, how it works, what it is, and how to improve it. As always, thank you a lot for supporting my channel. Everyone, thank you. Your comments, suggestions, greatly appreciated. Super thanks, support angels. Thank you a lot, everyone. Thank you. Stamina is arguably is the most important component of our fitness. It is greatly complementing all of other strength we might have. Strength, mobility, flexibility, coordination, balance. Without stamina, we cannot really use those components of our fitness efficiently. So now let's talk about the stamina, how we can improve it. Before improving the stamina, we need to really know what stamina is, what it rests upon, what it's uh, built upon. Stamina has a couple of components, a couple of factors which would define it. Those factors are six, the primary factors, the primary components, and the secondary components, two groups. Secondary components are local components. I will explain it a bit later. Let's dive into the primary components. Primary components uh, are three, your lungs, your heart, and the chemistry of your blood. Let's talk about the first one, the heart. Typically, actually, heart is a muscle, right? We all know that. It's a regular muscle which pumps the blood uh, across our body and we have five liters of blood to be pumped across our body so that uh, that muscle works really hard during our everyday activity typically in, a, in an untrained person a regular heart without any complications can exert 75 milliliters of blood per stroke so now you can do the math and um, calculations five liters divided by 75 milliliters that's how many strokes the heart might take to pump all those five liters across the body. Now, with physical training, when we do uh, so-called cardio exercises, running, jogging, etc., we train the uh, muscles of the heart to pump a little bit harder with more power. It means that if your muscle heart, uh, if your uh, muscle of the heart uh, is stronger, then now your heart can pump a little bit more uh, volume of the blood at, uh, at a time. Each stroke will exert not 75 milliliters, but 90 milliliters or 95 and all the way up to 125 milliliters. milliliters. So now if your heart can pump at the rate of 125 milliliters per stroke, it means that your heart uh, resting heart rate is going to decrease to approximately 55 strokes per minute, beats per minute versus typically untrained uh, person would have 75, 80 beats per minute. So that's how we save our heart's uh, capacity by training the muscles of the, uh, of the heart, uh, doing the cardio, uh, cardiovascular activities. The goal of those cardio, uh, cardio activities in the first place to make your heart stronger so that the muscle evolves, adapts, and starts pumping the blood at a greater volume per stroke, saving thereby its resources. Once your heart has improved its capacity to pump the blood, your stamina already increased and you can keep going for longer. But it does not stop here. After that, not after, actually at the same time, we also work at the capacity of our lungs. As you know, our lungs have um, alveolus, those special tiny sacs uh, bags which are absorbing the oxygen we inhale. When you inhale the oxygen, the air with the oxygen, 20 or 21 percent of the oxygen, gets in our lungs where, uh, when they interact with the uh, alveolus uh, mucus, alveolus uh, uh, surface inside the lungs. The chemical reactions happen uh, inside the alveolus and the blood gets uh, gets, uh, sorry, the oxygen gets absorbed into the blood to be carried uh, further down the system. So with the cardiovascular uh, training, we increase a couple of um, parameters of our lungs. First of all, we train the muscles responsible for the, uh, for the respiration. All our intercostal muscles, diaphragm and other guys are becoming stronger. So now whenever you take a breath, you can expand your rib cage a little bit, uh, a little bit more. Uh, thereby taking in more oxygen. So with stronger muscles of your, um, of your chest, of your uh, ribcage, you can increase the amount of uh, air you can get into the lungs at, uh, at a single breath in. That will increase the amount of oxygen uh, 
uh, which will be interacting inside the lungs, uh, inside those alveoles. This is the uh, first factor. And the second factor we increase, uh, sometimes we might increase the amount of alveoles, those sacs inside the lungs. Typically, on average, we would have uh, from 300 million to 500 million of uh, alveoles inside the lungs. And there might be some insignificant or significant increase of volume of those sacs, depends on your training, which will further increase the capacity of the lungs. The more alveoles you have, the more surface uh, to interact with oxygen you have, the more oxygen you can intake into your uh, bloodstream at, uh, at a single uh, breath. So you increase your heart, you increase the lungs capacity, the number of alveoles, and the uh, volume of your lung uh, expansion because your muscles got stronger. Now it comes down to the blood chemistry. Inside the blood, we have a special protein called hemoglobin. I might mispronounce it, excuse my uh, language, but uh, hemoglobin is the protein structure responsible for carrying the oxygen into your muscles, into your muscle cells eventually. The amount of hem uh, hemoglobin might be increased with cardiovascular training. So that hemoglobin, um, by virtue of being present in the blood, interacts with the oxygen you supplied with uh, breathing inside your alveoles. And uh, that oxygen bind, binds to the uh, proteins uh, of the hemoglobin uh, and uh, being carried to the blood, to, sorry, to the muscle cells down the stream. So if, you're, uh, if you do the cardiovascular training, that the amount of uh, protein hemoglobin might be uh, significantly increased in your blood volume, uh, in your blood. So more hemoglobin you have, more transportation, uh, transportation means, transporting means you have to deliver your oxygen to the, uh, to the muscle cells. These, uh, these three are the primary components of your fitness. The strength of your heart, 75 milliliters per second versus 125 milliliters per second to pump five liters of blood. blood. Second component is your uh, capacity of the lungs, the volume of the lungs by increasing the strength of your uh, muscles responsible for the uh, respiration, your diaphragm in the first place, and other guys helping. And the uh, third component of the uh, primary, uh, primary group is the, uh, the chemistry of your blood, the amount of uh, hemoglobin you can uh, you can have in the blood to interact with the oxygen. Oh, and uh, I missed uh, the amount of alveolus, the second, uh, the second component, the amount of alveolus, those tiny sacs inside your, blank, uh, inside your lungs, they can be increased. So you improve your heart, you improve your lungs, lungs, amount of alveolus uh, in the volume of the lungs, you improve the blood chemistry, the amount of the hemoglobin protein in your blood, and that is already a very significant improvement of your, of your stamina. However, stamina is not a universal universal thing. Just because you can run a marathon, it doesn't mean that you can hold the handstands for one minute. Yes, your leg muscles are trained very well. You can endure 2, 3, 5, 25 hours of uh, constant activity in the leg muscles, but once I put you upside down in the handstands, you might not uh, last even for 10 seconds. Your shoulder muscles will give up. Even though your primary components are great, your heart is very capable, your lungs are very capable and your blood chemistry is great. But how come that you cannot, uh, you cannot generate uh, good stamina in your shoulder muscles, but you have an amazing stamina of your legs? That's where the secondary components of uh, stamina come in play. The local components. Why the call local? Because they are being developed in the uh, muscles which are being trained. The local components are the following. The first one is the structure of the muscles, muscles being trained. I'll explain it later. The second, the second component is the structure of the muscle cells of those muscles. And the third component is the, um, the chemistry of the muscle cells of the muscles being trained. Now let's uh, start with the structure of the muscles being trained. What is the structure? By, by that I mean that with training, if you start training your uh, leg muscles, that the capillary density inside those muscles will be increased. Capillary density means that inside the muscles, uh, inside the muscles we have the uh, tiny blood vessels which are supplying the food, the oxygen, the nutrients to the muscle cells which are working uh, vigorously. 
and the amount of, uh, of road to deliver the, uh, the supply of the oxygen will be increased. So the capillary density will go up in those muscles which are undergoing significant, uh, significant stress due to the uh, cardiovascular activity. So instead of, let's say, 1 million blood vessels, tiny blood vessels, we might have 5 million tiny blood vessels. And that matters because if your primary components are great, your heart is great, your lungs, uh, your heart is great, lungs are great, your blood chemistry is great, but there will be, there might be bottleneck. You don't have adequate amount of capillaries to transport all those, uh, uh, all those advantages to the muscle cells. Now you're out of luck. That's the bottle. Uh, that's the bottleneck. So with training, the capillary density will be increased inside the muscles which are being trained. And once it happened, the uh, the uh, structure of the muscle cells themselves will be slightly slightly improved uh, by means of increasing the amount of um, of myoglobin. It's another protein which is responsible for storing uh, oxygen inside the muscle cells. So hemoglobin is inside the blood stream. So hemoglobin resides in the blood and carries the oxygen from the lungs to the muscle cells using the capillaries uh, as road to deliver the oxygen. Inside the muscle cells themselves, inside the uh, cytoplasm of the muscle cells, we have myoglobins, another protein which interacts with hemoglobin, gets the uh, oxygen from hemoglobin and, carry, and stores that oxygen inside the muscle cells. And when those muscle cells perform any, uh, any work, the myoglobin makes sure that uh, muscle cells always have oxygen to produce ATP, the other source of energy, adenosine triphosphate. We will talk about this later. So the amount of myoglobin inside the muscle cells might be increased due to the, uh, due to the aerobic training. So now we have the increased amount of capillar capillaries uh, inside the muscles. The oxygen can be efficiently delivered uh, using the advantages of the primary component. And because the myoglobin, uh, myoglobin amount is increased inside the muscle cells, now we can store that uh, oxygen inside the muscle cells for the, uh, for the occasion when we need it um, at a greater quantity. So the structure of the muscle cells uh, have been improved a little bit by increasing the amount of uh, the protein called uh, myoglobin. And the final component of the uh, secondary group, the local, uh, the local category, is the increased amount of mitochondria. There is an organelle of the muscle cells called mitochondria. It, uh, it resides inside the cells. Mitochondria uh, are, pow are power plants of uh, our muscle cells. They use the oxygen stored in myoglobin to produce ATP. It's a special molecule of energy. Uh, think about this as sugar, whether it's very inaccurate, but kind of sugar. ATP, adenosine triphosphate. That adenosine triphosphate is responsible for all the processes happening inside our muscles. Without that ATP, there will be no muscle contraction. And as fact, you're all familiar with the lack of ATP. Whenever you're doing bench press and you press and you fail completely, your limbs go numb and they just drop. That's because you exhausted the amount of ATP and the chemical reactions are not possible inside the muscle cells without that ATP. And the muscle cells just become deactivated uh, immediately. That's, uh, that's how uh, the ATP affects our muscles. So ATP, ATP is being produced inside the mitochondria, those power plants. Mitochondria with training might be increased in size and the quantities. So now very, uh, very interesting aspect uh, of, the, uh, of the secondary component. If your blood cell, if your muscle cells develop greater quantity of mitochondria and uh, greater size of the mitochondria, now your capacity to produce energy is greater. Now you can truly benefit from all the other components which are delivering your, um, your oxygen to the, uh, to the blood and all other nutrients to produce ATP, the final ultimate, res uh, ultimate uh, purpose of our stamina. Because the ultimate purpose of stamina is to make sure that you have adequate amount of energy to last longer. And mitochondria is the final stop of your improvement. So without the mitochondria, the mitochondria will be no stamina whatsoever. So now let's summarize it. We have two categories of the stamina improvement. 
the primary category and the secondary, the local category. The primary category is being trained by any physical activity by, uh, generated by any muscles, whether you're using the shoulders, legs, core, whatever you're using. In the first place, you are improving the primary, uh, primary components of your stamina, such as heart, in increasing the uh, stroke volume, lungs, in, in, in increasing the volume of the lungs, uh, not the volume, the expansion capacity of your lungs, and uh, increasing the, um, the amount of alveolus inside to increase the uh, surface to interact with the oxygen in the air we supply. And also we improve the amount of hemoglobin in our blood. Blood chemistry is getting better. So those are primary components. They can be increased by any cardiovascular uh, training. Now the uh, secondary components, the local, uh, local category, uh, it defines, uh, it's, uh, it's based on which muscles are being trained. If it's your leg muscles, then all the improvements will be happening inside the legs, uh, legs muscles. And that's why marathoners might be not good at handstands and vice versa. Because if you need stamina, stamina is more or less sometimes local, uh, local phenomenon. So if you need stamina of the upper body, you need to train the upper body. Stamina of the lower body, lower body, or better, train everything. Because the uh, local, uh, local category, the secondary uh, components of uh, stamina, the structure of the muscles in terms of the capillary density, capillaries are getting, um, getting more, um, more omnipresent inside the muscles, greater quality. The uh, change of the structure of the muscle cells by increasing the amount of the myoglobin, uh, myoglobin protein inside the muscle cells, that which myoglobin stores the uh, oxygen and myoglobin takes the oxygen from a hemoglobin from the bloodstream. And the uh, final prime, uh, secondary component improvement is the uh, size and uh, quantity of the mitochondria inside, inside the muscle cells. And the greater the size, the greater the, uh, the quantity of the mitochondria, the greater your capacity to produce energy, ATP, which is uh, adenosine triphosphate, which is crucial for all the chemical processes inside the muscle cells and for the muscle cells contractions. So now we know to train the stamina, we need to use in the first place greater, bigger muscles to train the, prim to train the primary components. It's the fastest way to improve the uh, primary components to use the biggest muscles and uh, the biggest muscles of our body are the leg muscles. That's why running and jogging and uh, any other activity related to the muscle, uh, to the muscles of the legs uh, is the most effective, uh, effective activity to improve the primary component because it's very hard to improve primary components, your heart and lungs by working with the finger muscles. I don't know how many contractions you will have to, uh, you will have to do. So, once you improved uh, the primary components, you can work with the secondary components, your leg muscles, your shoulder muscles, whatever you need for your training to improve the, prior, the secondary local components. And that's how your stamina is, uh, is improved. I know it's a lot of information, it's a bit complicated, but now you know what stamina is, how to improve it. Let me know what you think. Let me know uh, how you do this. Comment, please. And thank you very much for your attention. Trainer Maxim with you. I will see you in my next episode. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.